The Subcommittee on Ethical Conduct will come return to order. Um, today is July 27th. It is 12.05 p.m. Members, uh, the agenda has been passed out. Uh, I guess I'd ask questions. If you have any questions regarding the agenda, we have two testifiers with two attorneys with them. Um, is there any questions on where we're going today? So my plan here, um, members, it would be to take the two testifiers. Uh, hopefully we can keep that to an hour each at most. Um, obviously, we don't have any timelines. We can go as long as we'd like. Uh, after we complete the testifiers, by that point in time, I'm assuming we would like to have possibly a break uh, where we can uh, go to the bathroom, uh, grab a cup of coffee or whatever might, we might need, and then come back to discuss what our next actions are going to be, if there are any actions at that point in time. So to begin today, I'd like to ask Mr. Salaya, Mr. Bergen, Bergeron, um, Mr. Kimian, and Mr. Sharir, I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names. Uh, all four of you, I'd like you to come forward. We do need to administer an oath. And then we'll begin with Mr. Salah. Uh, so you've got five of you. Okay. Oh, and the interpreter. Who, which one is the? You're the interpreter. Okay, great. Uh, so to all five of you, do you swear that the evidence you shall give relative to the cause now under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I need an I do. Senator Champion. Uh, you might want to give the interpreter, like, break those up in smaller pieces so the interpreter has an opportunity to interpret and then go forward. I'll, I'll repeat it for the interpreter so you can talk to Mr. Salah. I've got yeses from three. Okay. Uh, do you swear? Yes. And he's, he's nodding yes. So, okay. Thank you, uh, folks. Uh, Mr. Salah and your attorney would you, and the interpreter, would you please take the seats at the podium? Thank you for being here today. Um, we will begin, um, I assume by the attorney would like to speak first. We have been traditionally allowing an opening statement from anyone who testifies in front of the committee. So uh, in this case, I believe uh, Mr. Ber uh, you're Mr. Bergeron? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Matthew Bergeron, uh, Mr. Bergeron. Bergeron Hoffman. Mr. Bergeron, please proceed with an opening statement, if you have any. Actually, Senator, Mr. Chair, members, my, my client is here today to, to answer some questions. Um, he's previously provided a, uh, an a sworn affidavit. Um, my understanding in uh, your discussions in the past, there have been some questions about specifics, uh, and he has uh, made himself available today to, to hopefully answer those uh, questions and, and uh, move forward. So, yep. so um, please make sure that uh, you're close to the microphone so we can get that onto the recording. I was able to hear you, but uh, I want to make sure that every, and this is being televised, so I want to make sure that, uh, and even I have a problem with that sometimes, uh, that we have this uh, so that we can have it uh, for the record. Uh, so, Senator Champion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just a little concerned because I don't see the interpreter <coughs> interpreting anything for uh, Mr. Saeed, and so, Salah, so, um, uh, so I think we should be clear if he knows some English or how that's going to happen because I want to make sure that he truly understands what's happening. Okay. I have uh, some English, uh, but I need a completely interpreted so I can understand the whole uh, process and every uh, word that was said so I can comprehensively answer the questions. Yes, Mr. Chair, if I might, to, Mr. Bergeron. to Senator Champion's question. Um, uh, Mr. Salah has conversational English, but because of the kind of technical nature of this, um, uh, 
we thought in, in consulting with staff that it made sense just to make sure that finer points, details, or things like that weren't lost in, in uh, translation in that sense. So uh, appreciate the concern. And just for the record, uh, the interpreter, you're, so I don't keep a butchering your name, your, your last name is Mr. Sharir? Sharar. Sharar? Yes. Thank you. Um, so members will begin with questioning then for um, Mr. Salah. Um, Mr. Salah, uh, we received your affidavit and reviewed that at a previous meeting. Uh, for the record, you are the president of Somali TV of Minnesota, correct? Yes. Uh, Mr. Salah, are you involved with, um, as president of Somali TV of Minnesota, are you involved with the billing practices under normal circumstances, or is there a business office that deals with billing services for Somali TV of Minnesota? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Salah, uh, in your aff affidavit, um, you indicate that you received two $500 payments from Senator Fateh in the past, in, ju in June of 2020. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, is it, Mr. Salah, is it the practice of Somali TV of Minnesota to charge for services uh, and, and uh, advertisements that are placed on Somali TV, is that a standard practice? The business is different. And TV go wah 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 لكن هذه قف كأور هو إنه كمونتي كجود وحويسية ورئيسية واحد سانك قادنا العكا ما قادنا. But if the person wanna inform some information to the community, we don't charge. لكن هذه أور هو إنه حيسي سوسمست دور شديس أما جناسي أو كله. But he, but if he needs to do some kind of like a campaign or advertisement for his uh, campaign, then we have to charge because that's a business dealing. Mr. Salah, um, the $1,000 that was provided by Senator Fateh, did that include uh, services for creation of the video that was used, or video, video or videos that were used in 2020? If we record the video, edit, do some uh, kind of like a technical work for the uh, video, then we have to charge. But if it's general information for the community, we don't charge. So Mr. Slaw, for the 2020 campaign, did uh, Senator Fateh request production of videos for, through Somali TV of Minnesota? Yes, we recorded some videos. Also, we posted some of the videos to our uh, platform. So Mr. Slaw, is the $1,000 for the production of the videos or the airing of the videos or both? It's a both. Okay. Uh, is there, Mr. Sly, is there a standard rate 
that is charged to campaigns for this production? No, there is no standard rate. Sometimes we negotiate uh, what, time, what, what, what level or what rate we're going to uh, charge. If someone uh, uh, campaigning uh, for a small town like a uh, city council or if he's campaigning for a statewide, that is completely different rate. So we negotiate based on what he's campaigning for. Or, sometime, or sometimes someone is advertising uh, a small business or let's say car dealer, those kind of like uh, people would not have the same rate in terms of charging. Okay. Um, Mr. Salah, uh, a disclaimer was not provided on the videos under your, under your affidavit number 10. It appears that you did not put the disclaimer on. Is that because you were not told to do that, or was that because that was just simply a production mistake? He told me, and he repeatedly told me, but I forgot to put that disclaimer on it. Uh, Mr. Salah, is it common practice that Somali TV of Minnesota provides invoices for when services are rendered? Some people ask to get the invoice and some people don't ask, but as a, as a business, we do the, uh, the invoice. So, but Mr. Slot, it's a standard practice that you do invoice. In the case of Senator Fateh, was there never an invoice cut? Well, the process was done in a, in a kind of like hurry, and also it was like a pandemic time. There wasn't enough time that we were meeting and, and discussing all those kind of like uh, details. Uh, Mr. Salah, a number of other uh, political, uh, political officers, uh, politicians, I guess it'd be a better way to say it, uh, have been on Somali TV, and we've seen some examples of that. Um, were they also charged for those uh, for those services or for those advertisements, or were some of this just informational? We charge all of them. An example, Omar is the person who uh, frequently, less frequently visit our TV. There's a lot of politicians that come and we charge all of them. Okay, so um, Senator, one example is, is Governor Walls and Lieutenant Governor Flanagan. So they did pay for access to Somali TV of Minnesota? Uh, I cannot recall, but sometimes if the campaign office for the Governor Wallace, sometimes there is a third party where people in the community who work with the office come to us and ask service, but if the office who support them, and if the offer comes directly to the office of the uh, governor, then we have to charge. Okay. Uh, members, I'll, I'll stop there. I've occupied quite a bit of time. Uh, questions from other members for Mr. Salah? Senator Champion. Thank you, Mr. Salah, for, for being here. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Salah, for, for being here. Yeah. Just a couple of questions for, for clarity. Uh, mm -hmm. It appears that um, 
you did negotiate a rate uh, to provide some services for uh, uh, then candidate uh, Fateh, is that right? Yeah, yes, we do negotiate with the politician like Senator Fatih. And it's my understanding that that agreement was not in writing. Uh, so can you tell us what the agreement was? مرکان الله صحیح رفت و هنگور نه نه حتی تو سال و کل حافظ حافظ هست نه کل سومالی بدن مدتگان قف کتر تمایه ما وح بدن موجودین کردن و مرکان اینا اینا وحیرو سرفس انتان که کردن و میشه کوک کل تر نه Yes, the agreement was not written, and the reason is the candidates of the person could be sometime in an area that doesn't have a lot of Somali population. So in that sense, even if we give that service, we cannot help a lot about his campaign. So in that sense, the negotiated price would be lower than that because the person, the area he's kind of like campaigning, is not that more beneficial or have impact for Somali community. Senator Champion. So I understand that because you, you indicated that each, um, each candidate, you negotiate differently because there's different needs. But what was the, the agreement between you all, Somali TV, and, and then candidate Fateh? Mr. Sloth. There was a specific agreement. By the time he was campaigning, last he was saying the community need to know these kind of like uh, policies that I'm campaigning for. And in that sense, if the person is campaigning a policy that is beneficial for the community, we don't charge in that sense. So that is the source of agreement we had. He comes, he tells us certain policy that he want to do when he becomes senator, and then we uh, uh, hire that for free, of course, because it's beneficial for the community. Senator Champion. So then are you saying that you did not charge uh, Senator Fateh uh, for any of the services? Uh, that, that you all provided with Somali TV? Yes, we did. Uh, for the work we have... Yes, we did charge uh, uh, some uh, certain aspects like the production of video and posting our platform, but there is a lot of service we have done for him that was not charged according to uh, the information it had for the community. Senator and, Champion. And what was the cost? Oh, what did you all charge him for the production of the videos? Mm. For Fateh, we only charge those two uh, produ uh, produced video in a thousand, which is like 500 each. But the work we have done for him was more than that. But due to uh, information for the community, we didn't charge those. Okay. And then, Senator uh, Champion. Uh, Mr. Salah, we received this affidavit. <laughs> so, so can you tell us... Um, if you, did you draft this affidavit? Some of them I drafted and some of them is the uh, information that we understand and agreed with the fellow uh, staff at the TV. Senator, Senator Champion. Just so that I'm clear, so um, so some of it you drafted and some you agreed, and who helped you draft this affidavit? Mr. Swan. If anyone. Mm -hmm. 
He's trying to find uh, the name of the person that uh, helped him. He said, I cannot recall the name of the person that helped me. Senator Champion. Did the person work for you or Somali TV? Oh, no, no. Or who did the person work for? No, doesn't work for the Somali he's TV. He's law office guy. Uh, he's from a law firm. Yeah. And, and can, can you share... Which law firm? Was it from the law firm of no, your attorney so. or was it mm. someone else's law firm? Someone Which else's law firm. Law firm? Yeah. yeah. So it's from someone else's law someone else's law firm yeah. that is un has been not determined. Oh, okay. All right. So you you don't know the name of the law firm or the no. Mr. Salah. Don't recall his name. Okay. So don't recall his name. Okay. And so, just for clarity, Mr. Salad, do you stand by everything that is written or that's written here on this um, affidavit? Yes, I stand up everything on it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Salad, one additional question. I've been reading a couple of different articles by the Minnesota Reformer, and they have reported multiple times that you did not charge Senator Fateh and I'm, I'd like to know why there's a discrepancy between what is reported though, and reported multiple, multiple times as not having paid money, but now you're saying that they did, he did pay money. Can you explain that? Mm -hmm. It just almost sent to me, mm -hmm. and then I post. In terms of what was reported, uh, was she was asking a specific video, and she asked if I charged that one, and I was referring to that video that I posted yeah. on my platform, she which was later, video. which was later used uh, WCC. So that is the one I was referring in my uh, statement, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Berger, if I might, um, I think this point kind of centers on kind of the kind of dual nature that Somali TV plays oftentimes as a, as a source of news and information in which ones where elected, appointed, and other government officials will appear, provide information, particularly as it related in recent years uh, to public health concerns and things like that, versus when they uh, have provided campaign or advocacy materials and, and paid for the opportunity to do that. And I think um, in being asked about that over time, uh, it has not always been clear to, to my client exactly what piece of programming might be talked about at that moment. And so um, just wanted to offer that additional note as hopefully a little bit of clarification. Further questions from members? Uh, for now, thank you, Mr. Salah, and uh, to both of the other gentlemen. Uh, please stay in the room in case there are any additional questions, um, but we will move on to our next testifier. Next up, uh, Mr. Kimian and Attorney Dooley. Mr. Kimian, would you like to make an opening statement? I would not. So we begin with questions. Uh, so Mr. Kimian, um, would you uh, explain your relationship to uh, the 2020 campaign? Uh, I believe you were the campaign manager for Senator Fateh. Yes, I was his campaign manager. And then you subsequently became legislative assistant to Senator Fate, is that correct? Yes. Just so I have this correct, you're Mr. Dooling, right? This is, this I'm Mr. You're Mr. Dooling. I'm Mr. Okay. 
I, I didn't get over to the other side, other wing, so I'm not familiar with who's who here. Um, could you tell us approximately when you worked for Senator Fate, uh, both as campaign manager and as a legislative assistant? Doesn't be, have to be exact dates, but give us some general time frames. So, um, as far as the campaign goes, I, I met Omar in 18 um, and was his campaign manager until mid May of this year. Uh, and then I was his legislative assistant from late December of 2020 until uh, also mid May of this year. You said you started in 2018 as campaign manager? I'm sorry, I'm just I, make sure. I, I was involved in the second half of his 18 campaign. Okay. For House. And Mr. Kamian, so you were, through the entire time of the, the entire year of 2020, you were campaign manager for Senator Fate. Yes. Okay. So as your, uh, as campaign manager, you were assigned duties. Um, what were the general nature of the duties you had to perform as campaign manager? So on the advice of my lawyer, I'm going to invoke my constitutional Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Okay. Did you have any communication with Senator Fate regarding uh, treatment of any absentee ballots during the campaign in 2020? So on the advice of my lawyer, I'm going to invoke my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. Um, Mr. Kimian, did you take any direction or instructions of any kind from Senator Fate regarding the handling, treatment, disposition, and uh, disposition of absentee balance on behalf of his campaign at any time in 2020? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, again, on the advice of my lawyer, I am going to respectfully invoke my constitutional Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer the question. Mr. Kimian, did you assist, assist Senator Fate with processing of any campaign expenses? during the 2020 campaign? Um, so again, on the advice of my lawyer, I'm gonna to decline to answer for the moment grounds. Senator, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Kimian, uh, are you aware of a campaign headquarters that was used by the Fidei campaign in 2020? Um, so based on the advice of my lawyer, I'm again going to invoke my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer. Members? Questions? Senator Champion was up first. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being here. They told me to get closer here. Sorry about that. Uh, so, Mr. Kimian, um, were you or can you tell us if any other person um, worked for the campaign with the name Dawson? I do not believe so. And when you worked uh, for uh, who is now Senator Fate uh, when he was a candidate in 2018, what was your role and function at that time? Mr. Kimmy? Uh I'm going to decline to answer that question on Fifth Amendment grounds. Th thank you so very much. Senator Kiffmeyer. Well, Mr. Chair, if, if the witness is declining uh, and continues to use the statement on the Fifth Amendment, uh, I'm not sure in regards to the questions we have here today. Um, but can you explain the, uh, Mr. Kimmeyer, can you explain the nature of your work for Senator Fate as his legislative assistant? Mr. Kimmeyer. Um, I'm going to decline to answer that question on Fifth Amendment grounds. Senator Kiffmeyer. Well, Mr. Chair, I, I, uh, there are a lot of questions. Um, it appears as though in this situation, though, um, they're going to be declining to answer, taking the Fifth Amendment on advice of his attorney. So I... Um, I think at this time I'm going to hold on any more questions. Senator, Ch uh, Senator Champion. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I recognize it just so that we're clear that a person has a right, you know, to yes. invoke their Fifth Amendment sure. right because we are citizens of this great country. And so that's one of the things that we can do. And I'm not suggesting that anyone is challenging that. So I just want to make sure that the record is clear that that's possible. But I do have just one additional question. Um, are you aware of uh, any ongoing investigation into this matter that makes it much more difficult for you to um, answer any of the questions that have been put forward today? Mr. Kimian. May I answer that question? Mr. Dooling. Uh, Senator Champion, thank you. Uh, there is an investigation that is, oh, can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. I apologize. There is an investigation that's ongoing. It's mentioned in the subpoena that targets Mr. Kimian. Uh, the Fifth Amendment allows him the right to not respond to questions if there's an ongoing investigation, so. Uh, Mr. Dooling, I do have a question for you um, as attorney. Um, questions I'm asking are regarding a uh, corporate contribute possibility of a corporate contribution, which Mr. Kimian will have absolutely positively no culpability in for a violation. There's a specific section of state statute that deals with corporate contributions from a political campaign. Mr. Kimian is not the treasurer of the FATE campaign, from what I can understand, he is has no culp no culpability or responsibility if that section of statute was pursued. So I am confused as to why uh, Mr. Kimian will not answer a question regarding something that he is invoked and he's invoking his Fifth Amendment rights for something he cannot be prosecuted for under any circumstances. Can you explain that? Uh, let me clarify an answer to an earlier question, too, if I may. I had I want to clarify that. Mr. Kimmy is the target of the subpoena, not the investigation that I mentioned. The investigation that I mentioned is the one that Mr. Bodder informed me of by email uh, relating to Musa, a federal investigation. And Mr. Kimmy can invoke his Fifth Amendment rights to a federal investigation, even if this proceeding is a state proceeding. He also can invoke his Fifth Amendment rights to supply, uh, to, in relation to facts that are part of any chain of evidence leading to a possible prosecution. But Mr. Dooling, um, there, there may be prosecution, but Mr. Kimian, under, I cannot find any possible way that under statutes, under Minnesota, I'm talking about Minnesota state statutes, I'm not talking about federal, that a violation of the corporate contribution law that exists on the books would have any connectivity to the campaign manager or anyone other than the candidate because the candidate is ultimately responsible for their campaign. I cannot, I do not understand, and maybe you can enlighten me, how you can invoke a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination on something you can't be prosecuted for. Can you please explain that? Well, Senator, Senator Champion, take a swing at it, and then we'll go to Mr. Dooling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just for clarity, uh, one of the reasons for uh, someone invoking the Fifth Amendment right is, is because you're not quite sure what the inquiry is about, not just from this body, but what someone else is investigating. And you want to make sure that your comments are, are not misconstrued to be an admission to something that others are investigating. And even though, Mr. Chair, you are a very learned one and you have a vast knowledge about a number of different things, um, I, I don't think your resume has on it prosecuting authority. <laughs> and so with that being said, it is always better to be safe than sorry. Uh, and I sometimes advise my clients you know, to be very thoughtful because anything they say can and will be used against them in the court of law, especially if you're you're also under oath, not only if it's a sworn statement, if it's, uh, if it's an admission against your interest, you just don't know. So that's my only swing at it, is not to suggest that, that I'm his counsel, because I'm not his counsel. He has very worthy counsel, but I'm just talking about one's constitutional rights and whether uh, someone can be prosecuted for something or whether we can see it or not, because it's possible that 
we do, because we don't know, we don't know what the impact of one statement would have on other uh, other investigations. So that's a, that's my um, uh, piece about it. But I think uh, his must work worthy counsel can speak to that. Mr. Dooling, if I may build off of uh, what the senator just said, there, uh, there's also an enormous number of cases, including U.S. v. Hoffman, a very old but very important Supreme Court case, that recognizes that. The Fifth Amendment privilege means nothing if you have to invoke it to explain why you have to invoke it. If he's got to describe the circumstances of what he fears, that defeats the privilege of the Fifth Amendment entirely. Well, I'm very proud not to be an attorney, Senator Champion, and I'm going to keep it that way. Uh, I'm just trying to get an answer to knowledge of a simple fact that seems to be completely obvious that there was a campaign headquarters. Um, that's all I'm trying to get, and I can't even get an answer to that. I think if I asked the question, what color is the sky right now, I'd get the Fifth Amendment too. That's a joke, but honestly, I'm a little bit frustrated in the situation, especially when there is no, cult, there is no connectivity under the statutes that Mr. Kimmian, that I can see, that Mr. Kimmian would be would be prosecuted for in any way, shape, or form. It's the campaign and the candidate that would be held responsible for a violation of corporate donations. Any additional questions from members? Mr. Chair. Senator Kiffmeyer. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think the, the reason why I asked the question about the nature of the legislative work, because I thought that was an area, uh, you were talking about what you're doing for Senator Fate as a legislative assistant here in the Senate, hired by the Senate to do that work. I thought that was going to be actually a very softball question as far as uh, being comfortable and, and, uh, and what a legislative assistant does. That's the one that surprises me a bit, but I absolutely do respect the right of a uh, testifier to plead the Fifth Amendment and uh, to do so. Don't question that at all. Um, it, it is one of those things if you, you can't even go to um, what were the nature of your duties and working for a senator, that was, uh, to me, a very um, interesting area to uh, take the Fifth Amendment on in regards to that. I don't question your right to do so, just that. And um, I think that because of that, Mr. Chair, and having asked that question, gotten that answer, that's why... I'm not asking other questions at this time. Any additional questions? Just the last thing, Mr. Chair. Senator Champion. The last thing that I'll say is um, I, I, I recognize that the uh, chair wants to have certain questions answered, and I can understand from which you are asking those questions, but I'd like to remind us um, as a committee that um, the campaign office is not a part of the complaint as it sits right now. And in the event that um, the campaign office is an issue, then there should have been some amendment or, or, or something else. But right now, the inquiry that's being asked is not rooted in the four corners of the complaint that I've seen. So I just wanted to remind us of that. Um, but, but outside of that, I want nothing that I've said to be interpreted as if I'm giving legal advice to anyone other than those who pay me to give it to them. But that is it, not here. So thank you so much. Well, Senator Champion, I'm going to disagree with you about the campaign office for the following reason, is that uh, the, while the complaint was specific to the campaign violation that now has been corrected, though I think there should be some level of, the campaign finance board should probably deal with some level of uh, penalty, which to my knowledge they haven't, um, the campaign headquarters issue I believe feeds into a consistent pattern of, um, I don't know if the word abuse is correct, but a pattern of violations in the 2020 campaign. You're, you're saying that we are specifically at to tightly constrain ourselves to the specifics of each charge but I also believe that as we investigate and as we have investigated, that as additional violations become available, become aware 
to the committee that those lead into a consistent pattern that is uh, against Senate rules in the shape of bringing dishonor or disrepute upon the body. Um, just because it wasn't included doesn't necessarily mean that it isn't something that cannot be taken into account, at least in my opinion. Additional comments and questions, members? Mr. Chair. Senator Kiffmeyer. Yeah, in regards to that, I think this is about ethics. And so some of these specific things here, what they really come down to is telling the truth. All right. And, and if you don't, or if you are um, and not referring to you, Mr. Kamina, this time. Um, so it's, it's an ethics issue. All right. And so um, just to realize that, that the uh, root of the ethics issue may be in a variety of ways. Uh, they are material, but really it is about how they were handled. Were they handled ethically or not? And so that's more what brings us to this ethics situation here right now. And determining the, the facts are also really important, but I think from our previous hearing, we've already had a substantial amount of information that was conflicting in such a way that um, only one can be telling the truth. And if one is not, uh, then that's an ethics issue. And that's the reason why we're here today. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Any additional comments for this witness? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to recall Mr. Salaya or Salaya and his counsel Salai? Salah. Salah. And his counsel and the interpreter to the to the podium. I have one additional question. Interpreter left us. Okay. Um, we'll try this, and it's a really simple question. I just want to get it get clarified. Uh, the affidavit that was presented to us was Senator Fate's attorney involved in the drafting in any way of that. Uh, of that affidavit? It's not most of them. Then he's, uh, the guy, I forgot the name, he's read it down, then I add something. Yeah, the guy told me that I read it down, then I add a lot of things. For, it's not the most of them. It's for all, all of all. Senator Kiffmeyer, uh, we have to be careful only because we don't have the interpreter here. Mm -hmm. The affidavit is notarized by Josiah Lindstrom. Uh, is Josiah Lindstrom a name familiar to you, Mr. Salah? Do you I do I you forget his name? He just called me, he text, uh, no, he's called me, then we meet my office, then he's laid it down, then I'm, uh, he's like maybe four or five, but then I'm at, my name is Siat, then TV producer, the money, everything is mine. It's not all of them for the, the guy. He's, he's from the law office, then I forgot the name. I'm having a difficult time hearing. But yeah. Um Maybe uh, can, was, yeah. was he saying that it was that he went to an office or some folks came to him, Mr. Bergeron? Uh, yes, um, Mr. Chair and Madam Senator. What my client was saying was that uh, attorney came to his office, met with him, kind of gave him a um, a couple of these notes, then he filled in a number of things about what had happened and what uh, who he was, his involvement with Somali TV, what had happened, and then it was uh, finalized. Senator Kipmer. Another question. In regards to that, how was that attorney found? How did Mr. Salah get connected with that attorney? Was it recommended to him? Uh, how did that connection happen? I mean, you, attorneys just don't walk into your office and say, yeah. so if you get what I'm saying, what was the connection? 
How did that happen? I think it's the help of the Fatih campaign, I mean, office, I think. So yeah, I think it's the, from the defendant for Omar. Uh, I think it's the from that way. Then he told me for the, I worked that way. Then I think he's worked the, yeah. I forgot his name then. He conducted me, then I read, then I'm, I'm a translator, someone in Somali. I have still everything in English you have. I have Somali here in my own language. Then I understand whatever is the, the read here. Senator Kivmar. Yeah, so Mr. Bergeron, in regards to what he just said, can you clarify that, the, what he just said? Well, I... Was it just, would you like him to repeat it? Was it just not hard to hear, yeah. hard to understand? No, I, and I want to be sure I get it accurate. Well, I think maybe it would be best if, if Mr. Salah leaned into the microphone and, and did yeah, it again really before. You have to really lean into it. It really makes a difference. I understand whatever he said, this affidavit, I'm signing. Yeah, I understand whatever he said, this affidavit, that 18 pieces. I understand. This is my own language. I understand everything. It's, I'm happy. It's okay. Well, so the question I'll ask to follow with that is, did Mr. Salah call the attorney? Did Mr. Salah make a phone call and call an attorney? Mr. Salah. No. No, lawyer for, lawyer for the Omar, I think. So... Mr. Salah has just said is he, he does not recall the name of the lawyer. The lawyer reached out to him. He believes the lawyer may have been affiliated with uh, the senator's campaign. Okay. Senator Kiffmeyer, that's, that's where we've been going. No, to, he's, to he, he's, and then he has also said that having reviewed it in both English and in Somali, he is confident in what is in the affidavit. Okay. okay. Very good. But the attorney uh, came from a campaign of Mr. Fateh, that was the connection? Is that correct? I don't remember Mr. Salah. from the state or um, in the capital or is the campaign, I don't remember. He's telling me for the, his work, that program, then he told me affidavit, then I understand whatever, I read it down here, it's the from me, then I sign it. So I, I think, uh, Mr. Chair, Senator, I think a fair summary would be it, it was a lawyer involved in this matter in some way, um, who that individual was and who their client was. Um, my client does not recall, and, and that predates my engagement with uh, Mr. Salah. I think, Senator though, Kipmer. that what I could hear from Mr. Salah was his mentioning that it had a connection with the campaign, with Omar's campaign. Um, I think that's what I heard you say, Mr. Salah. Could Senator, you... Mr. Mr. Chair, I think you were saying the campaign or some somebody involved in this. That I, I think the uh, um, that that is the point that is uncertain. Whether it was the campaign, the candidate individually, the senator individually, somebody else involved in this. The my client has stated that he he does not recall who that is. So I wouldn't want to attribute it directly to one potential player, mm -hmm. you know, um, or, or entity involved in the situation, but uh, right. he was approached and asked to provide a clarifying written testimony uh, under oath in the form of an affidavit, which he did and which is in front of you all. I, I appreciate so knowing that, Mr. Chairman, that that indeed is the case. Uh, I think that's adding some clarity to it, even if not the name, but the nature of that and uh, notary publics are a public list. And so when you have the name of the notary and also their specific number of their uh, commission, um, we can maybe find a connection then to the attorney or firm or something like that that we can do, Mr. Chair, and make kind of make that connection that we have here right now. But I appreciate the information from you, Mr. Salon. Thank you for taking the time to come today. You're welcome. Seeing no further questions, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. At this point, I think we'll take a break. 
just I, I need to go to the bathroom. Uh, I think we'll just take a 15 minute break and I didn't know that was that funny. <laughs> just being honest. Uh, I think we'll take a 15 minute break and uh, we will reconvene at 11:15. The set, I'm sorry, 1:15. This committee is in recess. Complaints. We have heard from the respondent, heard from a number of testifiers. Um, we've had uh, the ability to, th an extended period to think about what we've heard and what we've seen. Um, I guess as a general statement, uh, there are some concerning portions of the counts that have been laid forth. However, in, in the case, we'll start, I think we'll start with count two. Um, seems to me that count two, uh, there is no discernible, uh, tangible connectivity between Senator Fateh and the, uh, and the votes. Um, we don't have any, I cannot find any testimony that can um, make that case. Uh, so in the case of count two, the chair will move to dismiss count two entirely. Uh, uh, count two is of the second complaint I'm referring to as count two, and that is the uh, vote issue. Is there any discussion? Senator Kiffmeyer. Mr. Chair, I, I would say I understand what you are saying, though as I became aware that Senator Fateh was previously employed by the Federal Elections Commission. And I kind of think that sometimes when he talked about these areas, it was as if he was very new to these things, didn't know much about them. But if you work for the FEC, Federal Elections Commission, you did. You knew stuff. And I feel there's a greater degree of responsibility and culpability because of that. And I think it's important for us to realize that uh, the more knowledge you have, the, the greater that is. So I was, uh, I understand what you're talking about in regards to the, the motion, uh, but I do think, um, I want to be sure we all understand, this isn't like someone who didn't know anything about these areas, because federal law is actually more complex than state law, and once you've known that, there is a, a knowledge of and greater degree of responsibility for that. But I understand in the count, too, and I will support that motion. Any further discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion does prevail. With regards to count one or charge one, the first complaint, uh, this deals with um, the Somali TV uh, issue, uh, the campaign finance violation that has been found uh, and has been corrected. Um, I, pers I would like to discuss this first. I'll, I'll put forth a motion eventually, but uh, I am uh, not inclined to support the quid pro quo section of that complaint. Uh, I don't see tangible evidence that says that the half million dollars that was put into a bonding request necessarily was as a direct action or a direct result of any uh, any other activity, uh, I certainly have put forth bills for uh, nonprofit organizations uh, or not for profit organizations, and um, I don't see where there's necessarily a renew, uh, there wasn't a remuneration or any kind of connectivity. Um, it may not necessarily look good, but in light of the fact that we have now clarified that this was a campaign, there was a purchase of services. And now that has been a comp or that has been recognized by the campaign finance board. It tends to uh, not support that portion of the complaint. Is there any discussion to that section of the quid pro quo section of the complaint? Okay. Regarding the the rest of the complaint and the campaign finance violation that was. Uh, 
uh, established by the complainants, uh, I do find that to be a very serious matter. Um, we have also, during the time of this committee, uncovered another possible campaign finance violation, which I think is even more uh, disturbing, which is a campaign headquarters that was provided by a corporate entity. Um, but that is not our jurisdiction. It is a continuing pattern, which is why I bring it up, of violations of campaign finance. But it is, in my opinion, it is not necessarily an actionable, uh, actionable count. But it does make you wonder, as Senator Kiffmeyer said, if a person who is involved in the Federal Elections Commission, how they can believe that they can take a uh, campaign headquarters space from a corporation and not have that become a problem. That is troubling. However, the Campaign Finance Board, which will receive a complaint from me regarding that uh, so that they, may, wait, can, they can investigate that. That is their purview. But on the, the remaining portions of this count, uh, it has been, dis, it has been um, through a lot of thought that uh, the count one portion outside of the quid pro quo would be sustained and the recommendation to the Rules Committee, which is what we are doing, and we are reporting to the Rules Committee, that we would report to the Rules Committee that, the, uh, that Senator Fateh sh must uh, attend training sessions with the Campaign Finance Board to be better prepared and understanding of campaign finance laws. Uh, there is no further action or no further uh, uh, punishment that it would be enlisted by this committee. So to clarify that, the chair moves that the portion of the complaint regarding quid pro quo and the half a million dollars uh, bonding request is not sustained, but the remaining portion of the count, which is the campaign finance violation, is sustained. And this is reported to the Rules Committee with a recommendation that Senator Fateh uh, pursue training with the campaign finance, uh, campaign finance Board and that this the findings of fact will be drafted by council and this entire motion will be put forth before all members of the committee before it goes to the Rules Committee. Questions regarding that motion? Senator Kiffmeyer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. If maybe, were you going to? Okay. Um, one of the things I think in addition to this, um, uh, in regards to this, I just wanted to say, because I had followed up some questions uh, with Mr. Salah in regards to the notary that I just wanted to um, put on the record that uh, this particular notary, Josiah Lindstrom, uh, happened to also be with the firm, the law firm of Senator Fateh, uh, attorney. So it wasn't that law firm, and there's nothing wrong with that when you have a, um, a witness uh, that you're bringing forward uh, for any reason whatsoever, then that law firm working with Mr. Salah uh, to make those things. But I will say, though, that there is still a shadow, and hopefully this training will help clarify it, and also for Mr. Salah in regards to um, uh, providing the video file for, me, for, for Mr. Salah to broadcast versus... Uh, additional expenses with production and editing and doing other things. That's a very, very, um, uh, it's a corporate contribution uh, if it was not paid for and that the production, uh, uh, the posting of the video and paying for the airtime is different than paying for the production of the video, the editing and other things that are normally in a situation would also be an additional expense. And I cannot see a record either here, according to Mr. Fateh, Senator Fateh, uh, he is saying that um, that was done by Somali TV. Mr. Salah is saying it just provided the video for in the broadcast, but then in testimony even today, that there were other things that were done, but I found it very difficult sometimes to sort it out and understand it with a translator and other things. And I would hope that maybe uh, Campaign Finance Board 
might want to consider that um, as well. But in regards to your motion here, um, Mr. Chair, I would support that motion. Senator Champion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. One of the things I just want to clarify uh, as I was thinking it through and having some discussion is about the affidavit. One of the things that is important for us to remember as a committee um, is that this affidavit that we are privileged to see, you know, came from Senator Fate's uh, packet of information that was supplied to us. Uh, and from, from my understanding, uh, it sought to clarify an issue for this committee that we all will appreciate. So I think what we want to, you know, make sure um, that we're careful of is that it doesn't appear like there, that there's something else sort of uh, percolating there as if there's this notion of dishonesty. Clarity is always important and good for the soul, right? And so I have no problem with that. So I just want to make sure that, you know, we don't, you know, go down this further road of even suggesting that there's something else going on that was not going on. So, so, so I just wanted to make sure that I put on the record that it, that it was disclosed, uh, that it, it, it sought to clarify an issue. We had the benefit of, of uh, having Mr. Salah come in and also talk about, you know, how he stands by it, uh, whether we agree with it or disagree, but nothing sinister. So I just think that's important for us to remember. Thank you. Any Mr. further Chair. any further discussion? Once again, members, uh, we will have this wordsmithed and put in front of the committee uh, so that you can look at the findings of fact. Uh, we're just trying to expedite this so we can not meet again, although if you'd like to, we certainly can. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we will have that this written up as a final document and a report to the Rules Committee and have, all, have members sign off on it uh, when it is ready. I know that there is some vacation time coming up, so you may not see this, members, until perhaps middle August or maybe even a little bit later in August. Um, but we will have on the record that we did sustain a portion of count one. I think that's the only comment that I have uh, is that there is there is a sustained uh, motion on that part of the, of the count. So, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion does prevail. Seeing no further business in front of this committee, this committee is adjourned. <laughs>